Here's a question for you. Have you ever played the Persona games before? The only reason that we're asking this is because apparently Metaphor Refantasio is a perfect spiritual successor to the Persona series. And if you've played Persona, you probably know just how much of an accolade that is. But what if you haven't? Well, Henry, I have played a little bit of Persona and a little bit of Metaphor Refantasio. And I'm gonna answer maybe some questions that you at home or maybe thinking like, what is the combat like? Or why should I play it? How's the world? What is the story even about this time? I'll try my best to answer everything that you might be thinking of, plus anything that you can think of while we do it, all right? Yeah, all right, I got one for you. <laughs> what the hell is this game? Well, Henry, Metaphor Re Fantasio, as the name might suggest, is a fantasy RPG. But unlike many fantasy RPGs that you might have played in past, it's got this kind of very much steampunky clockwork fantasy vibe Ooh. to it, I like. But the story setting is very, very high fantasy. It is basically a knight's tale for the story, which is very exciting. Um, you play as your unnamed protagonist, which you can then choose to name. Oh, good. You name the protagonist. You do name the, the unnamed protagonist. That's protagonist. important. You do. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And his world is kind of enveloped around this story of betrayal and mm. fighting for a crown which is very exciting mm. so in the kingdom of ukronia uh the king part has sadly just deceased but Henry, it happens it happens especially when there's a murder um mm. the king was assassinated oh, and dear. it's to begin with you're not quite sure if the people are like no or if it's kind of behind the conspiracy theory, like the veiled mm, behind the curtains. They're hiding it from the public um, too. Yes, Ooh. but it's set around the king has passed away, murdered, because it's this magical kind of world as well. Um, this magic releases and all of a sudden everyone wakes up and realizes that democracy is a thing. So they set about a new tournament to find the new heir to the kingdom. That's not democracy <laughs> at all, <laughs> but fine. Yeah, we, we'll go with it. <laughs> it is not democracy manifest. No. It is not a succulent Chinese meal. No. It is <laughs> a tournament. Basically, the uh, <laughs> the fairness part is that anyone can enter. Oh, okay. And so fine. you, as the protagonist, the character that you play as, is part of this tribe that is lesser liked, shall we say, mm, around like across. Like outcast, sort yes, of, yeah, in yeah. a way. Cool. An outcast tribe, as soon into the game, you find out that you have this ability to wield the magic within the um, kingdom and pull out your archetype, is what we call it, by okay. literally pulling out your own heart, I guess. Oh my God. And that awakens inside of you, you awaken, and now you can become this archetype. Um, your first one that you unlock is the seeker, but we'll go into a bunch of the different um, archetypes and jobs that you can kind of have within the yeah. game, but that's the, the basis. You're playing as this protagonist, this, outcast who has this special magic which comes in very handy finds a lot of helpful allies and can build these bonds all throughout it as well all the while gaining favor with the people to compete in the tournament to become the next heir reclaim the crown basically so it sounds like a lot but it's actually quite simple at its heart like at its heart it's a very the goal is to become the new king yep and to do that, it's, you said it's an RPG, I'm guessing it's more of a JRPG, so it's like party system. So yes. yeah. So as we said at the start of the video, the game is by the makers of Persona Atlas, mm -hmm. who are renowned for um, these social sim. They got them on lock. They got them, they got them down. They basically they, created the genre. <laughs> we know the recipe, they have it, it's mm -hmm. delicious. Uh, serve us up another slice. I would say a lot more approachable for people that haven't played any of the Persona games because yeah, like there's a, a huge series of them. So where do you start? Persona mm. 5 is a good place to start. But if you're interested in kind of like dipping your toes in or if the setting maybe didn't really take your fancy because a lot of the Persona series is set around um, modern day high school, yeah. Yeah. and then you mix in that magic element. In this world, yeah. there's a lot of baddies at play. 
within that uh, political kind of agenda, as well as humans, which is what they call humans. Oh, it's pissed. Why, yeah, you ought Always is, wrecking stuff. Is what they call monsters. <laughs> is humans. Okay. Is, it's, it's I feel like that's a Analogy. metaphor for something, Bex. <laughs> like a re -fantasio. Yeah. <laughs> Or something like that. Yeah, anyway, okay. So, so humans are monsters. <clears throat> like, yeah. That freak. I have no idea what that's meant to be a metaphor of, but I'm sure it'll come we'll up. We'll find out. So I've got a little sense of like the environments that it's set in, the story makes sense. Mm. What do you actually do though? What's like the gameplay mechanics of it then? Yeah, of course. So um, Atlas are very good at storytelling and one of the key points they actually mentioned before the game came out and, and what they wanted to convey is, is that rather than just telling a story through, you know, cutscenes, dialogue, whatever, mm -hmm. how does that actually become something that you can interact with and things. So a couple of different ways that they have on lock, obviously, mm. from the JRPG um, element is very strong turn-based combat system. What's new in Metaphor is something that maybe people who aren't as well-versed in turn-based combat We've got real-time combat in this one for the first oh, time as well. Okay. So that works really nicely. Um, as, as well as the combat elements, we've also got social sim and this almost like, you know what it's like? It's like an aura system. How, oh, many, no, yeah, how many aura points you can get okay. from interacting with your party members. Like hanging out with them. Yeah, and, yeah. which again is not too dissimilar to other G uh, JRPGs specifically, mm -hmm. um, like utilizing them in battle or uh, hanging out with them literally socially. But you also have this system where you have to gain your aura points with the rest of the world as well. Because again, you're vying for a crown, you're vying for a democracy, so you want the people You've on your side. You've got to convince the people to, yeah. Exactly. Rally behind you a bit. Exactly. So let's talk about the combat a little bit. Yeah, I wanted firstly. to ask like, well, firstly, the real-time combat bit, that mm. excites me the most. The fact that they're diversifying a bit. It, what kind of other games is it most similar to? Would you say, is it like stylish action, kind of like yeah. Devil May Cry, or is it a bit more brawler, like Yakuza maybe, or how does it, get incorporated mm, it is it's similar to i guess more of the like a dragon newer kind of mm -hmm. side of things where um and, and and it differs from like persona 5's almost like real-time elements where you if you were stronger than an enemy you almost have it's like a bypass of the turn base right so yeah. this works as more of a benefit or like a setback as well okay. from your turn-based battles too so with weaker enemies that we came across you can just like s strike them down as you would like action games and carry on your journey mm -hmm. with um other ones you come across if you manage to do like almost a sneak attack or get um the upper hand on them get a couple of real-time hits in you can start the battle um with the upper hand and it's like gives you it, it depends on the characters that you have to play but that will release either an opportunity of attack of opportunity sorry or you'll get extra damage in or vice versa if the enemy like sees you first and attacks you first in real time mm. then uh, you're put on the back foot which cool. is not always the best for turn base so it's, it's, it's like elements of how it works in Baldur's Gate 3 then in a way in that like yeah initiative is kind of a thing but also yeah. elements of like visions of mana where if you're quick enough you can like start off the battle in the arena with a quick hit first yeah. and then it kicks off absolutely yeah. and that's cool. just from the start like the the kind of starting areas that i have mm. played so far so i'm excited to see how that also develops later in on what that real time feels like but again that's just another element that i feel is more approachable for players that haven't played these kinds of games before yeah. um a bit more familiar yeah exactly yeah. and then the other side of that is then the turn-based mm -hmm. side of it which I, you know they're pretty robust in the way that they handle turn-based they know what they're doing is there anything that's either new or slightly changed maybe from previous games they've done for sure in metaphor it's much more like a i mean they refer to it as like a job almost so you give your parties the archetypes that you want them to play as ah. so you you set the role so similar to 
Baldur's Gate 3 using that as a comparison if you've played it. You can chop and change like from Barbarian and Rogue, etc. Mm -hmm. You can do the same for yourself as well as your party members in nice. metaphor. And not only that, so a couple of them like that we've come across that are super early on is like Warrior and Mage. Um, and you can change that actually within dungeons and within combat situations. By the way, on archetypes, they're like 14 base ones. And then mm. from there, you can like expand almost like a skill tree. It looks like you, you choose what roads or paths you want to go mm. down for that like archetype. Name the base ones. All right, fine. Let me look at my notes. Yeah. Okay. Archetypes, base archetypes. Seeker, that's your one you start with. Mage, Thief, Brawler, Warrior, Knight, Healer, Commander, Gunner, Merchant, and Faker. So you get an opportunity to like make them into like hybrid classes, I guess, from there. But can you also go back on your decision? Can you like reset it? So if you're if you're a faker for a bit and you're like, I don't like it, you can like change it back. Yeah, you can change it on the fly like all the time. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So no no risks at all. You can just yeah. dabble, see what suits your play style and then go from there. Exactly. You uh, need like a, a currency type to unlock like the yeah, learn them fun. for um, those characters. But then, yeah, Put you can chop tab. and change anytime. Literally in your dream state. Yep. Which is something familiar in metaphor as well. You have this like second world where you come across a character called Moore and he is like, well, he is A, the author of this human fantasy book where obviously the humans in our world, the modern world is the, the fantasy. Mm -hmm. He's the author of that and you have this magical connection with him and he is the kind of um, purveyor and scholar of archetypes and the magic that like they convey through. So that's how you can learn more, how you upgrade them is to um, him. There's also a cat you can pet there. Very important information. Nice. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's the kind of second world element to it that you visit kind of in, in your dreams and um, you can do it throughout like safe um, areas too, as well. Sounds good. It sounds much more like more player agency, I guess, because if you're in, yeah, if you're in a dungeon and like, you haven't come in fully prepared mm. previously it would you'd feel a bit hard done by i guess because if you're not able to change things whilst in there you're kind of you're a bit screwed really yeah but it sounds like with the uh, metaphor at least mm. you have the opportunity to adapt on a sort of case-by-case -case basis within like a dungeon within a battle um to adapt your like team and make sure that they're going to be ready for you know if you start to get familiar with the enemy types that you're coming up against you can be like oh i remember that you know, a warrior is quite ha handy in this particular yeah. scenario, so I'm going to swap them out and make them make them a warrior for this fight, and then swap exactly. them back to something else after that. Exactly. That's good. Mm -hmm. And then, in terms of like progression, outside of that, is it is it pretty straightforward for players to understand, like, oh, what the power curve is, kind of, you know, leveling up certain aspects of your party or your own character, or how does the leveling work? Yeah, great question. There's, I guess, a few different like level up systems within metaphor for you to keep an eye on there is um as as most familiar with games you've got a bunch of skills that you level up with the xp that you gain from battles etc so things like that will be like you're increasing your physical attack your magical attack your defense etc finding um extra items and you can choose those skill points with your your protagonist that you play through. Um, your other party members are like specific. They'll just gain as they go through their level ups. Although some of the items, so the equipment that you find or buy, that'll attribute to those as well. And then also for leveling up, you have um, other skills and abilities that you can apply to your archetype that you also find through research with more or from gaining experience as mm. you go along as well so those are kind of your what's necessary within the combat elements yeah. and your character yourself and then like i was talking about earlier i guess is the the leveling up the social yeah. side of things and does that that impact combat are they like synergistic like if you if you're more social then your party will be better at fighting if your party's good at fighting they're going to be more social with each other or are they kind of independent systems is there much crossover it's all very synergistic i reckon mm. as we go in as was with 
previous Persona games that did play like your bond as they call it in metaphor and um, then has an impact on like how well you perform as a party or like extra opportunities for attacks that mm. you can get in there as well and so yeah I, I very much believe that this will probably go down that route later nice. on as well um that's cool so it's <laughs> obviously uh got that half and half side to it the social side the um the combat um was there any like weird social bits that you got to experience yeah so these guys could be kind of weird sometimes kind of weird, yeah. kind of weird but kind of fun yeah um social element is really cool actually um it's it's quite nice in terms of uh it's like you're just hanging out with your mates you mm. actually do i mean luckily as well the characters are are quite likable as well yeah so it's like hanging out with your mates you can serve up some dinner in the evening Cute. time well it's kind of again well, come it's, dine with me <laughs> i yeah. like it it's, it's kind of a there's a couple of different elements to social so yeah there's your party side of things so you can choose who you want to spend time with and mm. um there's activities during the day and night that you can take part in and i'm guessing as well that'll open up more as your game opens up too because during the day a lot of the early game anyway is um you know set on dungeons and getting used to that side of things so obviously that increases not only the player that you use um xp the characters you use their xp but also your bond with those characters mm. and then in the night time so far yeah you can cook some meals and hang out with them like that that's cute it reminds me of um a game that's on Game Pass, uh, Dungeons of Hinterberg, a little bit. Mm. I know that they obviously do it in Persona, but for some people that maybe haven't played Persona but have seen Dungeons of Hinterberg, that's like a, a great example of yeah. building that rapport and literally hanging out with other people just to learn more about them and I increase your viability in the other half of the game, which is like combat and dungeons and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Great, great comparison. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like that, but just exponentially with loads yeah. of people and you bring those people along with you in your party so mm -hmm. it's good to get to know them exactly yeah then there's also extra social in terms of as we mentioned extra earlier social. extra social okay. as we has mm, <laughs> not an official term i've just said that extra, extra social in terms of contests that you're like vying oh, for yeah. and the aura <laughs> points no it's, it's it's called your royal virtues so you gosh um it's a fancy yeah and and similar to again using persona 5 as a comparison you had like these characteristic points um that were literally like charisma etc yeah your social stats or yes. whatever it was, um, right? it's yeah. like developing a human within game you're like <laughs> learning how to become i'm still a developing myself i i cannot do everything for you mr metaphor i'm sorry <laughs> You're gonna have the worst social stats if I play this game. It's We're just gonna have to get through every dungeon, kill everything. <laughs> Party members all hate each other. That's probably how I play it, but I'll try it. Yeah, it's fun. Like this one is, it's uh, a five point system. Yeah, and you're, it's, it's like a crown, which is very uh, on the nice. nose, obviously. Yeah. Um, for no, your royal your virtues. Gutted for your royal virtues. And uh, the way you earn points into those is by interacting with the general population of the world around you. So mm -hmm. um, you can do things like give over items like a medicinal herb or whatever, or, you know, help them out here or there. It's very Fable-esque, like you're, you know, the hero of the the Yeah, the kingdom, everyone looks up to you a bit and they- Well, they, they don't know the start, oh, but you're right, trying to yeah. make them. Yeah. Yeah. They'll hate you, but no, it's fine. Yeah. We'll get there. We'll yeah. win them over. Um, Maybe. Which brings us on to, I think, let's talk about the world itself and how the game actually. Yeah, I've seen some freaky exists. monsters already, but when it's like a fantasy world, um, I have high expectations, you know? I expect everything to look grand and like quite, well, fantastical in the, the settings of everything should be, you know, visually arresting, very distinct from each other. Is that the case in this game? Oh, Henry, your expectations will be met and blown away as <laughs> far as you can imagine um, all right it's an absolutely uh well, aesthetically let's start there gorgeous yeah. looking game and you and played it on series x so you were getting the peak frame rates peak best frame rate. like visuals yeah for real-time uh combat that was really sleek and smooth and it, it felt super seamless as well going into turn-based it's a lot snappier to a oh. lot of the combat i found personally than games that i've played that are similar it's also like well it's not it's 
open world in a sense that you travel to lots of different biomes and things like that okay. once the game opens up a little bit from the hub world that you have which is the capital city and mm -hmm. um, you then obviously go on your quest and like visit lots of different regions to win over the people which provides a look of different areas and those crazy looking monsters a uh, different variety of mm. those as well i think that's um, important because you don't get too used to one thing as well like you're there's mm -hmm. constantly something fresh to look at even if you're going to revisit an area you've probably got so much to do in between it plus with hanging out with your mates in like the evenings the mornings whatever you're you're planning to do it's nice to know that you're not going to stick around in one area for too long unless you're just really enjoying it there i guess absolutely yeah. atlas have a beautiful I mean, it's been refined for so many years now, but they have a beautiful way of just like in creating an incredibly strong visual identity in games. Mm. Um, obviously, it's it's quite familiar to an anime style for those um, that are watching it now, yeah. and you're like, oh yeah, that's anime. But everything is so incredibly detailed, like from the menus, the like skill trees for the archetypes that I was talking about earlier. The, I believe the background art, a lot of it, was from the same team that did Nier, Automata as oh, well. Oh, cool, so yeah, nice. crossing over again that, like, almost sci-fi high fantasy mix. Like, I don't even have a term to describe it that isn't, like, steampunk, because it feels beyond that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so everything just is such a treat for the eyes. And also, the soundtrack is wild there are <laughs> nice. some it's is really good and again it's the um same composer as persona 5 which is there has, a lot of them like funky bass lines in there well not so much oh, okay. like i mean it's still funky don't get me wrong yeah, yeah. but you're right persona 5 has, has like this super so much poppy bass jazzy and, yeah, it's, it's great it's banging um so imagine like your man who did that just did it and and it's supposed to be medieval bardy music mm. and things like that Playing like the slap harpsichord yeah, yeah it's yeah, nice. sick cool hmm. um and then what about uh what about the like visuals of different combat animations like when you do use an anime style you know for your 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 artwork i'm expecting there to be like anime scale battles in terms of like moves and stuff like mm -hmm. that does, does it look does, are the animations pretty sick like during fights oh yeah that comes across uh, very visually arresting when you're performing them, but I particularly notice anyway, um, because of these crazy human monsters that you're fighting, a lot of the enemy attacks, especially if it's a like named enemy or mm. someone that's a bit larger than just your average. Like um, Demi-boss kind yeah, of vibe, yeah. Um, the attacks are actually terrifying. I'm so cool. worried that my party is about to get like wiped out with every one of them because they do just like completely um, take over the screen in the game and you're like, oh, oh no, like something's about- Oh gosh. To yeah. Something's about to go down. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's really in engaging in those kind of things, which is, is hard to achieve sometimes with turn-based because it, can feel quite repetitive like for people if that's and, not yeah, yeah. yeah especially if that's not your vibe but it's, it's not the case here for metaphor nice well how about you wrap it up for me and them what is the place like how does this game actually play and who is it for as well i think metaphor refantasio is a must play for persona fans but if you are a persona fan let yourself be known and i'm sure you don't need me telling you to play it but if you're not and you're new to the Atlas way of things or haven't even always thought that maybe JRPGs aren't, aren't really your bag, Metaphor Refantasio is such a good place to start and then delve into a wonderful list of historically amazing games mm -hmm. in the Persona series and beyond. I mean, we're coming into like kind of cozy season. It's getting chilly here mm. in the UK anyway. There's so many hours in this game that you could enjoy and just relax and let yourself like get fully involved in the story because it is such a, it resonates with me a lot because I love high fantasy stories. I love Knight's Tales, Kings, politics, all that sort of vibes with ye olde times. And then, yeah, just brings this like super fun and really fresh like outlook at that kind of environment. So the full game's out on October 11th, mm -hmm. I believe. So not too long to wait mm -hmm. for that one, but you can actually get hands on with a demo, which 
I might have to do, by the way, you've been talking about it because that's a completely free demo and it's, so it's pretty long, right? Oh yeah, it's, it's the first, I believe you can play like up to the first 10 hours of it, but you can play beyond that and get like resources, build up coin that carries over into oh. the main game as well. Nice. So you set yourself off on a, a great footing for when it does come out. No do wasted it, time with this probably 100 hour plus game that will completely absorb a lot of people's lives. But that's it for Metaphor Refantasio. There will be loads of other game previews on the way for Xbox. So if you do want to check out any of those, let us know what games you'd like us to play. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll do our best to get hands on with them a little bit early so we can give you a flavor of what they're like. I'll try to play the next one, unless it's something that Bex really, really wants to play first. But we'll wrestle for the controller. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to drop us a sub if you want to see the future of our videos. And bye. Bye.